This is Rosen, Discrete Mathematics and its Application, Section 13.4, uh, where we talk about language recognition. Um, and what we will talk about in this particular video uh, is regular expressions. We'll leave the other portions for other videos. First riddle, what is greater than God? worse than the devil, the poor man has it, and the rich man needs it. Well, usually in my class, somebody has the answer ready, but they don't give it this way. I say it's the empty set. But that's just another way of saying nothing. And um, I have a specific purpose for that, which we'll get to later in the uh, presentation, uh, other videos. First, let's go to regular expressions. Um, we've seen how finite state automata can recognize languages, NFSAs and DFSAs, um, uh, uh, ending in final states for those uh, words that are part of the language. Claney um, uh, showed that there's an FSA that can recognize a language if and only if it is built up from the null set, the empty string, singleton strings. These will all be uh, made clear later. But then doing things you already know how to do. Do concatenations, take unions, and claney closures. So all of these things you will have uh, experienced in this chapter so far. And we'll see how they kind of pull together to create uh, languages that can be recognized by FSAs. And if we can build a set using these techniques, it's called a regular set. And these are related to regular grammars. That is type 3 grammars that we saw in 13.1. Uh, a uh, set is regular if and only if it is generated by regular grammar. We'll see that later. There are other types of sets that cannot be recognized by FSAs, and we'll discuss that in a later video. All right, regular expressions. These are just ways to build up uh, regular sets, and their structure allows us to do proof with them. So they're defined recursively, and they have three basis cases. Here are the basis cases. Um, the symbol that looks like the empty set symbol is a regular expression. The symbol that is a bolded lambda is a regular expression. And the symbol x uh, bold is a regular expression whenever x is an element of my input alphabet. Then the recursive portion uh, is given next. Any uh, Whenever a and b are regular expressions, then the concatenation of a with b, a union b, and the Claney closure of a are also regular expressions. So we have the basis uh, cases and then the recursive step. All right, what do these represent? It won't be any surprise at all. This symbol that looks like the empty set, it represents the empty set. That is the set with no strings in it. And this symbol that looks like the empty string, guess what? It represents the set containing the empty string. And this uh, symbol that looks like one of the symbols from the input alphabet represent the set containing that symbol all by itself. And then the concatenation unions and claney closures represent those sets created by those concatenations, unions, and claney closures. So it's just another way to write down uh, a set. We've, we've seen other ways to write down set using roster notation and uh, the brackets. Uh, this is the regular expression method for writing down these types of sets. And as I say, we'll see that they're useful in a proof later. And if, again, if we can represent a set using these um, symbols, then they can they are called regular sets. Let's take a look at uh, just some of the characteristics of them and how we might use them. What are the strings in these regular sets? Well, how about 
This is one concatenated with a Kleene closure of zero. What does that look like? Well, Kleene closure of zero is any number of zeros. So one zero with a star is a one followed by any number of zeros, including no zeros. All right, how about this uh, one concatenated with zero and then the whole thing, Kleene closure? Well, that means I'm going to be taking um, this one zero with any number of times. So one concatenated with zero Kleene closures, any number of copies of one zero, including the null string. Remember, um, Kleene closure always contains uh, the empty uh, string. All right, let's see. Uh, zero union zero one, that's pretty straightforward. It's just the string zero or the string zero one. How about zero concatenated with zero union one Kleene closure? Well, that zero union one Kleene closure looks just like V star. That's just zero and one, any number of combinations of them. That's all possible bit strings. But if we add a zero to the front, we get all possible strings that begin with a zero. And this last one is the Kleene closure of zero concatenated with one. The whole thing Kleene closured. And this will represent, notice it will never be able to have a zero at the end of any string generated this way. So that represents any string not ending with a zero. Of course, that will include the uh, empty string because it is an element of that set. It doesn't end with a zero. All right, so that's English uh, language descriptions of regular expressions. Let's see if we can go the other direction and see if we can find a um, regular expression for the set of strings having even length. And if I want to have even length, if I build them up from uh, bits that only have length two, then I should always be even. I want to have all possible um, words that have length two to do that. What I do is I concatenate zero with zero, zero with one, one with zero, and one with one. I union them and I take the Kleene closure. That'll be all possible strings with even length. How about ending with a zero and not containing a one one? It says all strings that end in a zero don't contain a one one. So I need to make sure that I can never have one and next to a one with any concatenations and inside of any Kleene closures. Um, and that means I can, if I build it up with uh, pieces that only have uh, one on one side and a zero on the other, or otherwise zeros, I should be able to avoid it. So here's how I do it. It's ending with a zero and not containing a one one. Well, this zero union one zero Kleene closure will never have a one next to each other because there's always going to be a zero to the right of every one uh, because of that uh, regular expression there. However, I say that it ends positively with a zero since that's a Kleene closure that contains the empty string. So I need to add one more uh, uh, bit to it so that it ends in a zero or a one zero uh, so we don't get the null string. All right, and then finally, containing an odd number of zeros. Well, to get an odd number of zeros, you could get an even number of zeros with as many numbers, as many ones between them as uh, as needed. Remember, this is all strings. And then we might need to add, we would need to add one more zero to the front of the back. So here's how we do it. This is zero with any number of ones, zero with any number of ones. Kleene closure of that's going to give me all bit strings that have even numbers of zeros in it. But that would, in, uh, that would include the, the null string. Um, but if I add a, a one Kleene closure, zero, and a one Kleene closure, that makes sure I have an odd number, because I'll have an even number plus one zeros. OK, so that's regular expressions and um, how we can build up sets using them uh, and describe them in English or take the 
English and, and create the uh, regular expression for a set.